Hi everyone, my name is Leah Trokach and I'm very excited to be here and to welcome you to the second seminar to be led by women only under the name Women Punching Out. Today's seminar will be dedicated to kata. I will focus on stances within the kata, followed by six sensei colleagues that will focus each on a different aspect of the kata. But before we dive into the various aspects of kata, I would like to define what is kata. So kata is a combination, a sequence of movements, including punches, kicks, blocks, etc., against multiple opponents. It is that thing that to non karatekas looks like fighting against the air. But in fact, kata is an exercise, is a form that is made to help us, both students and senseis, to understand techniques and principles of correct, healthy and efficient use of the body. And why is it so important to practice kata over and over again? Because practice makes perfect. However, a good practice is not to practice the kata over and over again, kind of like a robot, but to explore the kata, to investigate different aspects within the kata, to divide it into small pieces, dissemble it into small chapters, explore each chapter separately, and then to rebuild it back to one whole piece. And this is exactly what all of us, seven senses, are going to do here today. Discuss, explain, and demonstrate these ingredients. So I will start with the first subject within kata, which is stances, dachi in Japanese. The function of the stances is to give strong base, support, and connection to the ground for every technique we make. It is like the foundation of a pyramid on top of which everything is built. We can divide the stances into two groups, stances with outside tension and stances with inside tension. Let's start with the stances with outside tension. The stances under these categories are Zenkutsudachi, Kokutsudachi, Kibadachi, Shikodachi, and Soshindachi. Let's talk a little bit about each one. So the first stance is Zenkutsudachi. The front foot is facing forward and the back foot is 30 degrees. Let me show you from the side. The front leg is forward and the back leg is 30 degrees inside with an angle of 30 degrees. The weight is in the center, the pressure is to the front leg, this is why it is called front stance, and the tension is outside. And what is important to notice when we, when we practice the front stance is that we keep the width of the stance is the width of the hip. If we stand too wide, then when we punch, the, the body is not going to absorb the shock coming back from the punch. And if we stand too narrow, we are not going to be stable. So the width of the hip enables us to support, the, the, the body is going to support the technique that we are doing. And this stance is suitable for punches and uh, techniques, even kicks, forward. And let's see a short example of how the stance support the technique. I will, for this demonstration, I will call my lovely sensei and husband, Sensei Moshe Okach. So, so, when the stance is good and the feet are grabbing the floor and the posture is good, the, the shock that is going to come from the punch, the body is going to absorb the shock and the stance is going to help everything happen. Like this. Okay? So, when I touch Sensei Moshe's hand, the shock is going to the back foot. But if the heel, for example, is up a little bit, so the stance is not strong and we're not attached to the ground, then see what happens. The body collapses and the energy spreads into different directions. The next stance is Kokutsudach, which is sometimes called back stance. So, back stance, the feet are 90 degrees and they're on the same line and the weight is in the center, the pressure is to the back, to the back foot, this is why it is called back stance, and the tension is outside. And this technique is good for either blocks to the side, like shotoke, and to uh, kicks with the front leg, kizami, kizami geri, or kizami hawashi geri, because, the, because of the pressure to the back leg, the front foot is 
The front leg is uh, lighter and there is not so much weight, although the weight is in the middle but with a little, with the pressure back leg and so it, is, it makes it easy to do Kizami techniques, Kizami Geri techniques. Next dance is Kibadach. The feet are parallel to each other. The width of the stance is twice, twice the width of the shoulders and cannot be too, the legs cannot be too close to each other because then the center of gravity is up and they cannot be too apart from each other because then there is no tension between the muscles, there is no connection to the stance. So, and the toes are pressing to, towards the floor, the knees are above the toes, the weight is in the center, the pressure is 50-50 to each leg and the tension is outside. And the advantage of this stance is to empty techniques, to side techniques, it supports it very well. However, when we do punches to the front, the body doesn't support so good, so this is the disadvantage. If I punch forward, the, the, the shock is going to come back and there is not enough support. Even though the stance is strong, however, when we do to the side, it supports very well. Next stance is Shikodach. Shikodach is similar to Kibadach, however, as in Kibadach the feet are parallel and in Shikodach the feet are pointing forward 45 degrees outside. And this enables us to shift the weight from side to side. And we can see this stance in uh, katas like Kite that we're pulling, that we're catching and pulling, catch and pull. And the weight is again in the center, the pressure again 50-50, tension outside. Last stance is Soshin Dachi. This stance has a little history because the traditional way of doing, of performing Soshin Dachi was same like, in a way, same like Kibadachi, only diagonal. So the foot are pointing to the same direction with the diagonal and Sensei Nishiyama in the last years changed it into kind of a combination between front stance and back stance. So the, the new Soshindachi, the updated one version, it looks like some kind of combination between Zenkutsudachi with the front leg pointing forward and the back leg like a Kokutsudachi, back stance. And the pressure is 60, about 60% 60 to the front leg, to the front foot, and 40% to the back. The weight is still in the center, a little bit, the, the weight is actually a little bit forward, and the tension is outside. And this is a very, very strong stance, which is good both for attacks and for, defend, to, for, for defense, and is um, both to front techniques and also sideways. And now to the stances with inside tension. The stances in this group are Hangitsu, Sanchindachi, and Denkoashidachi. In general, I can say that stances with inside tension are good for moving sideways because of the tension inside, when it is released, is a potential energy for moving to the sides easily. So starting with Hangitsu. Hangitsu is very similar to Zenkutsu Dachi with two differences. So if in Zenkutsudachi the foot is facing forward, here the front foot is a little bit twisted to the end and the, the tension is inside. And let's see a short example. So if I attack and sense a motion blocks, then because my front foot is to the inside and the tension is inside, it makes it easier when I release the tension to move easily to the side. Also in kata hangets, we can see that because of this angle of the front foot, it is the body and the stance is more connected and it supports the technique, the side block, better than if the foot is to the front and then something is escaping. And now to Sanchin Dachi. When we practice Sanchin Dachi, we need to pay attention that the heel of the front foot is same line with the toes of the back foot and the pressure is inside, the tension is inside. 
And we can see this stance in katas, in advanced katas like kata kite, for example. And last stance for today is neko ashidachi, cat stance. Is starting, let's start with kokutsugachi, which we already know, but we make it smaller and smaller. And now, because the connection is not very good and it doesn't support the technique, so tension inside, and we lift the front heel up, like this. And we, this, this stance is very good for front kicks because the, the front leg is very light, and so it's very easy to do kizami maigiri. An example. And now, because the front foot, the, because of the tension inside, when I'm going to release it, it's going, it's going to help me move to the side. So when we're practicing kata, we must identify each stance. We need to be accurate in how we perform it, and we must understand thoroughly how it is supporting the techniques that we are making. And this is it for today regarding my short introduction on the subject of kata with focus on stances within the kata. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, you are very welcome to push the like button and even share. Thank you all for listening. And Stay tuned because there is much more to come. Good posture is really important, not only in kata, but in your every move. It helps you doing techniques, right? And prevent your body from injuries. First of all, you should stay naturally. Keep your body straight. Don't move to the sides because it damages your spine. Have your shoulders soft, but fists strong. Keep your head up. Feel, feel it like a balloon with no weight, which goes up. Keep your chin a little up because of cervical spine. It should not be bending. Your legs should be straight and a little bent. Keep your inner muscles engaged to the spine. Now, let's try some exercises. Lay down on that tummy. You should touch the tummy on the back of your head, shoulders, buttons and legs. Now, put your hand under your back and exhale. You should feel pressure on your head. Repeat few times and now you should feel pressure on your head when inhaling or exhaling both. Okay? Put your hand next to your body and try the same. Your back should touch the hand. Okay, stand up. And you should feel the same when you are standing. Inner muscles are really important. You should strengthen them. It helps core training and compensatory training and engage them around the spine. When inner muscles don't work, every other muscles will not work. To keep your body strong and resistant, imagine it makes up a rectangle. We have four edges, two of them are shoulders, another two are on the top of your pelvis. When you stay on all edges of rectangle move together. Now, try one simple exercise. You can do it with your partner, but when you don't have any, just find a piece of wall. Stay in any stance. Okay, I choose Thank you too much and yeah, you too. Correct your posture, your stance, your back knee, your head, and push against the wall. When you are sure, push a little bit more. 
when you push more against the wall, you can feel where your body is weak. It can be your knee, shoulder, elbow, whatever. Try many times until you are really sure your technique is correct. Now try another technique. It's really good exercise when you want to correct any technique when you are at wall. All parts of your body and all muscles should cooperate. Upper and lower part of your body should be connected. Even if you stay on place and don't move, your legs are still working. Try Zen Tsudachi. Just change. Kizamitsuke, Gyakutsu. Try a few times. Even if your legs don't move, they are still working. You should feel energy flows from fist to the back heel. Now, today we are talking about Heyashuna, but it is in all cutters. The techniques are given. So, you know exactly what you should do. Which techniques, which stance, which position of hips, in which direction. But, every person trends different. It depends on your gender, age, physical capabilities of your body, and so on, so on, so on. Even if the techniques are given, you should find your own style how to do them. It could differ in small movements, how you do it, but which works for tall men or for children will not work for me as a young, short woman. Now I have shut up. It is basic kata with long moves and basic techniques. Think about your body. All parts cooperate and move together. Remember the edges of the rectangle. Keep the same level. Don't stand up even if you are changing direction. Your breath, your hands and legs finish in one moment. In this moment, you have to be sure about your technique. Remember when we were pushing against the wall. Now, your upper muscles should push against back muscles. It will help you with your posture and with your breath. Keep your head up and don't bend your spine in one wrong direction. So, first of all, learn the principles. Study how body works and which is healthy for you. Then, adapt techniques to your body. Of course, when you are a beginner, it's difficult for you even to coordinate the techniques. It's absolutely okay and normal. When you are more advanced and sure about the techniques, you can adapt them to your body. Your sensei is really important for you, but in my opinion, most important sensei for you is your body and yourself. Listen to your sensei, do which he or her says, and try your best. But listen to your body, because nobody knows more which is healthy for you, how do you feel, and what you can do. So cooperate with your sensei, with your body. It will tell you how to do things correctly. Thank you for watching. Hara Ventura from the Czech Republic. Us. The body 
is engine and the center of action. My name is Hanna Juráňová and I will speak about body dynamics and its application to kata training and teaching kata. Body dynamics is an external movement of the body in space in order to produce force. Uh, it is movement around the spine and more specifically around the body center. We have six body dynamics. Quickly, it's rotation, vibration, shifting, pendulum, rising and dropping. And we use one or combination of those body actions. Here in Shudan we can have rising and dropping. Rising and dropping. Practicing kata is a great way how to improve yourself to be able to synchronize breath and muscle action and dynamics. And as I said at the beginning, the body is engine and the center of action. So everything has to come through the body center. Uh, well, energy from the feet to the hands uh, or from the hands to the feet has to transfer through the body center. But we can't increase energy without ground reaction. After you practice the external form of your kata and you are trying to focus on body dynamics, uh, first of all, try to practice your kata without your hands. So it means that you will focus just on the legs, on the feet work, and on your body center. Yeah? And you can also practice your, your posture. So without your hands, just... And it's also a good way how to practice to not be stiff on your shoulders. And one more fun thing uh, with this uh, exercise is did I put uh, the mats on uh, the feet of my students if it's possible or something uh, really unstable which gives you a really uncomfortable feeling so you have to be really really focusing on the feet work yeah. And since the kata was originally used as kihon, uh, which is a set of techniques and combinations, we can apply this idea into our training of body dynamics in kata, which means that we need to split our kata into smaller pieces and work on each segment separately. So the idea is we want to uh, give our body a drill. And with drill or drills, we will build up on each action and well, we will improve. So what do I use in my training or when I'm teaching my students is that we split our kata into four, four pieces, four parts, or into just, you can go by combinations. One of the most effective way how to improve body, your body dynamic in kata is uh, to drill just combinations. Yeah. For example, in here, Shudan, we have first combination, Kidan Mara, Oitsu. So, you can stand and just with your breath, rotation, energy from the ground, and again. Then you can continue and uh, go with other combinations. And what is really important is that uh, you should be really working, uh, first of all, you should be working on your external form and slowly. Because when you start doing it fast and you want, really, you want to really hard work on your body dynamics and your stances are not perfect or quite perfect so you can uh, you can it can lead to injury yeah so start slowly and then build on each segment and this is also a great way how to teach kids their kata because uh, when they when you go by seg segments 
or smaller pieces, uh, they will focus more and they will concentrate and even the stances and uh, like the form is is much better than when you are trying to teach them the whole kata uh, at, uh, at once. So when you are not in good shape and uh, you are doing the whole kata and at the, at the half of the kata your, your breath is, uh, your breath starts to work bad and you even uh, don't breathe and uh, well it's, it's bad for your kata and maybe maybe it can be worse than you expect. So first of all try to work on each segment and then connect them. You can connect uh, one piece to second and just do half of kata or uh, you can do a whole training, you can practice uh, one piece, uh, second piece separately, third, etc. And then you can uh, connect them at once and maybe try the whole kata at once. It can work, so you have to try what uh, works for you. Next exercise which, which I like to use is to throwing balls. Last thing uh, what I want to say is start slow and be mindful. Mindfulness is the main key uh, for your practicing of karate, not just kata. Uh, be careful and try to focus on each movement and don't rush. So thank you very much. Us. about breathing and continuation in kata. In karate we study to breathe from feet. It means uh, with help of exhalation we activate a diaphragm, intercostal muscles and stomach muscles and we use it for pressure to flow. <coughs> it's a theory, but how it works in practice? On competitions and any other performance during kata, uh, we often hear 
and sometimes do loud exhalation. This exhalation uh, is created by vocal cords. Simple question, why? It's, um, it's a nature our our nervous system. In stress situation, our breathing rises up. Breathing from top means we have strong top, uh, we have uh, strong neck muscles and uh, uh, shoulder muscles and that eliminate stomach work and correct feet work. How we should breathe from stomach connect with our action in karate. A stomach all the time is a small tension, tone. Breathing out, a diaphragm goes up and our stomach goes a bit ahead. Uh, with this movement, we uh, with this movement we create pressure to floor and use it for our action. Our stomach does such kind of snap. Um, to better feeling this connection, we will do exercise with medicine ball. We take a ball and throw it to the floor uh, using only arms. Of course, uh, this row uh, has a certain force, but um, only due to hands. Limited work to hands and uh, using uh, throw the ball, limited work of hands and uh, using uh, using breathing and work at diaphragms. When we feel this connection, we uh, can uh, use it for our Gijon. For example, Chokotsuki from Hachiji Dachi. All our attention on concentrate on stomach work, breathing out and pressure to flow. Some uh, some case uh, from Kibadachi. Practicing and paying attention for all these aspects, we notice a sound a disappear, uh, disappears, lightness in shoulders and uh, speed of punch increases. We'll add one more chokutsuki, but we'll try to do uh, two punch without poses, rentsuki. Quick stomach work gives us an opportunity uh, to do in combination. Kata is unique methodology of training that consists of combinations. Continuous movement, smooth alternation depends of breathing. Um, only through correct breathing we can avoid unnecessary pose. A take a, a split a technique, a take a split of second. Kima is shorter because it's final phase of technique. Uh, it's important to understand basic principle. Breathing never stop. Even, even when technique stop, breathing never stop. Uh, in karate, there is no breathing in. It means we, uh, we try to 
breathing, do breathe fast and not noticeable. Mm. To better understand this, imagine a uh, imagine car in a city and engines work. When car arrives in a city and stop on traffic light, uh, engine in, inside a car continues to work. Some case with breathing in karate. Uh, when we stop breathing, energy in our body also stops. It influences on zanshin, reaction, uh, moving of center, pressure to floor. Uh, it, it, makes our, it makes our action an integral. And um, our aim not to long how to move uh, hands and arms separately. Our aim uh, learn how to transport energy. In fact, uh, first variant can look not bad enough, but the uh, difference between first variant and second variant is huge. A limit from Nietzsche Shiho. Firstly, my center immediately goes to opponent. I use all my body when I do block. I feel uh, the rip of supporting food in my hand and I do not waste my time. show you separately work arms and legs. It's impossible. I spread mistake uh, of doing during kata it's uh, overstaying, overcuing in Kime, breeze holding, and creation of unnecessary poses. There is uh, there is, is interesting methodology training of training kata without Kime. Movements must be soft and smooth, and of course without poses and uh, Kime. I try to show you. Uh, it's, for example, Nidushiko. understand this exercise, you will do them poses. Habits, stereotype, uh, wrong understanding, it doesn't matter now. Um, you, uh, you can imagine, imagine yourself like brook of water and your energy like a flow. A flow never stops. Uh, when uh, when we feel it, we can turn Kime in this exercise and practicing your kata.
practicing instructor, I very clearly see a difference uh, in such implementation. I explained to my children that their kata is a kumita. After block, uh, they immediately to do counter attacks because uh, they do not release uh, their opponent. But but uh, after punch, do not wait too too much because um, because from other side an opponent attacks there. Um, a pose can be only for Kima. Step by step, our kata is create uh, our kumita. Hi, my name is Shirley Venerbrina and today we're going to talk about kata. Kata in general, but more specifically into Hayam Shudan. So today I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, kata application, which means how we use the knowledge, how we use the skills that uh, kata give us, how we use it in a real fighting situation. So before we get into that, I would like to first of all sum up a little bit of what my co-sensei said so far. Kata in Shotokan Karate has a big role, and that role is to teach us how to, um, how to build foundation, how to build a, a skill set to use in a real Kumita situation, in a real fighting situation. So when we talk about foundation, we talk about many different aspects, such as posture, body dynamics, such as shifting, rotation, vibration, um, footwork, how to use our foot right, and how to use the floor to move from one, from one place to the other. Um, Kata also teaches us how to create and how to use mental picture imaging of, uh, of a technique that we want to be in and to be able to bring our body to that technique. Um, Kata also teaches us how to coordinate between the different body segments, how to use the floor and how to be able to, to bring the energy from the floor and transmit it through the body, through the center and the, the body segments to um, execute a technique, any technique doesn't matter. Kata also teaches us the flow of the motion and rhythm. So the rhythm in, in Kata is, uh, is giving us indication of how we will use speed and timing in, in a specific uh, technique sequence in a specific situation. Kata also teaches us, of course, stance and the different techniques. Not, not, we're not only talking about punch or a block or a kick of any kind, but also the distances that are uh, optimum for that specific stance and that specific technique. And lastly, Kata teaches us uh, Kime and breathing, how to connect to the floor and how to derive energy from the floor to execute any technique and pressure reaction. So, um, so let's talk about that a little bit. So in karate, when we come to teach karate, we break karate into three segments. I call it the three Ks. So the first K is for Kihon, basics. The second K is for Kata. And the third K is for Kumite. Kumite is our final product. This is our final goal, to be able to defend ourselves. Karate is a self-defense martial art. This is what we want. We want to make sure that we don't get hit and we are able to defend ourselves in, in any case, in any situation. To get to that final product, to get to be able to, to do kumite skillfully, we first need to learn the foundation, the basics. And the kata, the kata is the bridge between the basics to our goal, to the final product. So if we look at it as a, as a, a book, right? Kihon will be uh, the word, the letters. Kumite will be the final product, the book itself, the whole story. And the kata is the sentences and the paragraphs that make that makes those words become a book, become the final product. So uh, we're going to talk about this uh, and uh, and demonstrate it as well. So when we come to teach a kata, at least for myself, when I come to teach a kata, especially young kids, I want to make it interesting. I want to make it pikant. 
So I make, I make the kata a whole story of, uh, of a great fight. It's like a, a once upon a fight story um, that the kids love to learn about who was against who and what did they use and how did they do and, and what was the final result of that fight. So it's a great way when you come to teach kids uh, to use the kata as a story. So the story, this story is going to help us teach them, teach them, teach ourselves as well. First of all, to build spirit, build the spirits of the fight. What was it like? How did it feel? What do you feel when you when you are in a real fight, right? But also it teaches us and it builds skills. So we use that skills and the spirit so that when we come to fight, when we come to kumite, we can use it to be uh, efficient. So uh, let's talk about Hayan Shoda. Hayan Shoda is a story, right? So we start the story. Hayan Shoda. The first movement in the story, we're gonna go left. There is some kind of enemy right here, and it's going to attack us. The first reaction, like we talked in the first seminar, is the first reaction. The first, uh, first reaction is my breath, and I use my eyes to give direction to the breath. Right? I give direction to the breath. I feel something happen here. Like this side is going to kick my gary to this part of my body. My goal is to not get hit. Right? So I'm going to use the floor. I make pressure to this leg to make this leg, the left leg, free to do whatever I need to do with it. In this case, go forward uh, in Hayan Shodan. I'm going to go forward, get down by. So, this is the first movement. We're going to do this again. So, what? Reaction my breath makes the center of my body move to this direction with a block. And from here, we just got the next step in the story is step forward, or is a key. So let's try to do it a little faster. So this side is going to kick. I'm going to block, attack, like the story in Hayan Shoda. The next movement in Hayan Shoda, actually before we go to the next movement, we use the basic that Kata gives us, but we can also, we, we use it as a basic, but we can also uh, manipulate it and use it in different ways. For example, in real fight, let's say he kicks, but instead of going backwards, he's going to lean forward. So, it's going to be this one, and his foot is here. From here, there's no point for me to try to go forward because I don't have enough space. So in this case, I may use maybe something else, like, like this. And I can continue from there, right? So let's show it from a different angle. So he's going to kick this way. I'm going to block from here. I don't have enough space to go to move forward. So I'm going to take him down and then I'm going to punch. So that is another option in Hayan uh, Shodan. The next movement is going to be from here. So from here, the, the continuous of the story is going to the other direction, Gidan Balai. So, if I'm going to the other direction, maybe it's coming this way, right? So I'm going to block, block, and from here he's going to try and stick my leg. I'm going to take my leg and punch his face. And from here I'm going to go forward, always okay, right? Again, so I'm blocking. One, try to stick my leg. Two, and then backwards. Yes, this is the story in Hayan Shoda. However, we can change it a little bit. For example, one, let's say he doesn't move. He's not trying to sit my leg. I need something else. So maybe something like this or this. Then other options. Another thing that Kata teaches us is combination. So from here in Hayan Shoda, we go forward. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. In application, it may be something else. When we go back in Hayan Shoda, when we go back from here to here, we're doing step forward punch. One, two, three, kya. So when we apply that, I'm going to do it to this direction. So when we apply that, I have an enemy right here. 
right here. And I can step forward, step forward punch. But maybe now he's not going back. Maybe he's going forward. So we have different options. The first option, like Hanshadan tell us, is just going forward, but maybe he's blocking. I missed it. Let's try the second one. He missed again. Now maybe I will catch him with the third time. Ah! I did, yay. But, like we said, Kata teaches us also uh, different uh, distances. So, in this case, let's say I didn't have enough space to make three full steps. So I'm gonna use smaller steps. One, maybe Tsubiyashi, and then a, uh, another punch. So we have different ways. If I do it fast, right? I don't have enough space to go another full step. I don't have that space because he's not moving. So what I'll do is, what I'll do is I have different options. Maybe one, two, yes, and then another one, or another option. If he's going back fast, I'll just catch him. Ready? So, so the kata, like I said, gives us a lot of a lot of tools, and the goal is to teach us the skills, and we need to be able to take those skills, make them good, find them, so that we can use it in a real fighting situation. So that's it so far. I hope uh, I gave you something interesting to think about, and enjoy the rest of the session. Bye. Us. Welcome everyone, my name is Sensei Alicia, my Sensei is Sensei Angelule. Today you are welcome in Toto Ludwig, yes, in Poland. So, my very short lecture is about mental aspects in Kata and I will tell you about few elements that you can work during your trainings and you can uh, improve your Kata and when you train your mental aspect you don't have to be so dynamic and you can go with very smooth moves but you have to concentrate very very hard okay so let's start first element my first element i want to talk about is name of your kata if you understand the name of your kata you know what is it about if you, for example, choose, I choose end for you, okay? So you start. <laughs> so, you go with MP. And what does it mean? The MP means the special kind of the bird which moves up and down in a dynamic way and very, um, it likes to change directions, yeah? So, if you understand what the names mean, so you can mentally go deep in your kata. Because when I call this kata NP, I am already in, I know that it is special combination one, two. I go up and down. And up. Okay? So you go up and down and you are very dynamic. You want to change your direction and you want to and you don't want to cut your techniques, okay? You have to have this transition between them. So first thing, name of kata. You have to know what does it mean. If you don't know what does it mean, Mm, go to your sensei, ask about you are doing your favorite kata and you still don't know mm, still don't know some elements like uh, the name, like uh, why these techniques are like this, not like that. Ask your sensei. They they know this. Yeah, yeah, you have to trust them. So mm, name. Second thing is timing of your technique and understanding. So if you understand the time of your technique, you can do your kata properly. 
This is very important, okay? So, if you choose Hei Yang Shodan, the first two techniques are Ukebaza and Atai. So, if you know this, you already hear, you know, Ukebaza. Okay? You already, already. Okay? You are already in Ukebaza. So, you don't do a Mashibaza. Makes no sense, right? No sense. So, you have to choose what kata you are doing. You have to know what the name means and what timing of your technique you are doing. Very important, okay? Next thing is four aspects in skill points. It's a transition, that means you want to do continuation. You want to do continuation between all your techniques, okay? Transition. Then dynamic. Six dynamics, we already talked about this, okay? So, transition, dynamic, next, for the shape, the shape of your technique. If it's shoot off, make sure your position is good, your body system is good, your hand is in a good place, not too high, not too low. This hand is like that, not too low, not too high, okay? This is all very important because this is the best way of doing shoot off, okay? Not this, not this, not this. Keep your elbow in, yeah? This is very important. If you know this form, you have to change this uh, a lot of times, but it's also a mental aspect. You have to know what is the best shape of your technique to do this in a best way, okay? It's also mental. Um, Transition, dynamic, uh, the shape, the form of your kata, and power. If you know what power and your energy comes from, and how to go in good direction, and you focus your direction in one point, the last point, you are at home. You know everything, actually. So, four aspects you have to know about, and you have to do this during kata. So, it's transition, means continuation between technique, no cut, no cut between one, the other, the other, okay? No, you have to know that continuation means go, don't cut, go, don't cut, okay? This is very important. Second. Form and shape of your kata. I talk about this, it's very important. We have to train this a lot of times, okay? Uh, next one. The third is dynamic. Six dynamics of your body. Sensei uh, Riyad, us. Sensei Riyad talked about this last lecture. So, actually, you should know all about this. Um, and the last one is power. Okay, I talked about power during, uh, during our last session because power come, comes from uh, our muscle, okay? This is uh, our physical power, okay? Second, it's, uh, it's floor or something you can push from, okay? It can be, it can be wall, it can be chair, it can be ceiling, something you have and you can push from. Because from this press, you can make energy. You press, it reacts, okay? So you make power and the third uh, aspect of power. So you have physical, you have uh, the outside power and the last one is mental power. So if you focus all of this free, in one direction, in the final point, you know what you are doing. So, power, transition, shape, and the form of your kata, and dynamics. Okay? This is the next thing about mental. You have to understand, and if you know this all four forms, 
during a tournament, the judges, if you understand this in your body, the judges will see. So make sure you train this good, in a good way, and then you have to have best ways of doing your uh, exercises at dojo. Because if you train only kata, you do only moves, so make sure you add all mental aspects to your kata, okay? You don't want to look like a, a dancer doing choreography, okay? You want to make sure you are doing kata, okay? Uh, yes, and the, the last one, the last one I want to come back to your body system. Okay, I want to come back to your body system because during doing kata, you have to remember that all your te techniques don't want to bend. You don't want to go in both directions. Okay, your tandem and kami tandem want to and they have to go with a flow with a one direction. Okay. So make sure it's all about here, okay? No, not here or here. And if you change directions, for example, you want to go there, so you don't do this or this. You want to go as focus in one time as you can, okay? So make sure your tandem and kanu tandem are focusing in the same direction. So um, the last one is bunkai actually. So if, I want to tell you about bunkai because if you are doing kata, we are doing kata to show that we can understand uh, our techniques, our moves, and then we are doing bunkai. Uh, on the tournaments or something like this, okay? Or on a, in a dojo. So if we are doing our bunkai, uh, we are showing that our combinations have some meaning, okay? If you understand what you are doing, it's actually very important, not only in bunkai, not only in kata, actually in your life. So if you understand what you are doing, uh, if you know hand and shoulder starts like this, you know that here you can have some maybe my daddy, maybe uh, I'll just give over here, but maybe my daddy. Oh. So you know it's ukebaza, and you know this my daddy will be following, and you want to have some attack, yeah? So you do ukebaza and then attack. Okay, so it always means what time you do, what is Bunkai all about. If you know what you are doing with your techniques, you are doing some blocks, you are doing attack, you are doing uh, special timing, you can understand all of the kata. Okay, so make sure. All your elements are here. So um, let's make element one by one. You have to know all your name of your cut. If you do LP, make sure you do LP and you know what does it mean. You want to be like a bird, yeah? Like a bird, very quick, very dynamic. Not like a big muscle man and doing the slow and very heavy. Okay, quick, okay? Understanding, name of your kata. Second, timing of your technique. Very important, not only in kata, but if you do this in kata properly, the judges or tournament, no, they know, okay? Uh, they see everything. Second, four elements, the third one, sorry, four elements uh, of skill points. Skill points, you know, skill points. Uh, skill points is uh, when you are on uh, your tournament or championship and you are in the final, so you are very deep in the kata. Judges can see this, 
and they always have your uh, your score because they see you can understand this. you are very deep, very mature in your kata. Okay, so four elements: dynamic, power, transition, and shape form of all your techniques. Okay, the last one is tandem, kami tandem. Bam. Okay. No. 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 Oh, this is okay. It's not very, uh, very rare to see that some of kids do do like this. Okay. So because they want to see their feet, or they are very, uh, very shy or something at the beginning, especially. So make sure that they are looking in a good way and they can and can and not, uh, not going the both ways. And the last one is Bunkai. If you know Bunkai of your kata, you actually, you are doing your kata, you have some imagine. If you have this, if you have in your imagine this picture of what you are doing, you can show it without having this opponent. Okay, so the kata needs some good imagination actually. So you have to train this, you have to train this visualization that you have some opponent and you do this blow and this hand is here. Yeah, so it helps. Yeah, it helps. Uh, especially to understand what you are doing. Um, yeah, I think I talk about all of the elements I wanted to talk about. Uh, these are some aspects I train on my trainings with my sensei. So yeah, in this, uh, this last element I want to thank you for this short lecture. Uh, us. Thank you for being here in Poland to join for the work. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to be back and be here again. Thank you again Riyad, Roka for arranging this and thank you to Budu Karate for being a, such a progressive organization and hosting this. Anyway, so the subject today is Kata. And for me, the most interesting aspect of karate has always been the more meditative side. So I chose to talk about meditation and how it relates to kata. So I think that maybe I need to start by defining meditation the way I see it. It's kind of about being present, about not having this chattering mind talking to you, trying to quiet your mind and becoming aware, becoming attentive and not, uh, it's okay that thoughts come and go but not to get stuck on them and especially not to judge them and have an opinion on them, just letting them pass by. So that's how I look at meditation in life. But how can we use kata to enhance this and then take what we learn from that practice into our life? So, um, I can, you can kind of see it like a lake. When a lake is completely still, you, you can look down in the reflection and it's very clear. Um, it's whatever you see, you see it as it is and it reflects, reflects back to you and you don't judge it, it's just there. And if you start to judge it, it's almost like it creates reefs on the lake. And what comes back to you is distorted. It's not the true picture the way it is. And this is what causes emotions in us, unstable emotions. And the opposite is if we can move away from that judgment and our being opinionated, we can have a calm, quiet lake and create stable emotions. And that's what you can do through pra kata practice and of course sparring practice also. So in Budo, uh, we have a saying, Ensen, and Zen no matsuke. So it means as if looking at a far mountain. And this is 
we want to see a mountain from afar. Uh, in Karate, we have, in Kata, we give ourselves physical cues as put your eyes behind. That helps us to see a wider, broader, broader perspective. And, you know, we don't want to be stuck on one tree or a goat or a house on the mountain. We want to see everything, including the tree and the house and the goat. So that's a very important concept. And one of my favorite philosophers, Krishnamurti, he called this kind of awareness, choiceless awareness. It's an awareness that you have without having a point of view about what it is that you're perceiving. So anyways, enough of that said, how does this relate to kata and to karate and to sparring, mainly to kata today? So the way I see it is, even from the beginning of a class, we start by sitting in Mokso. So in Mokso, we say attention to breath. And then we close our eyes, half close our eyes, and we pay attention to our breath. So this is a way to avoid other interference, a way to quiet our chattering mind, get focused on you know, the practice that's coming up or closing the practice at the end. And so this is one way we are focused, we're putting our attention to the breath. And through kata, we, we do this instead, of course we use our breath in kata too a lot, but we also use additional tools. Kata is a little bit higher level, I would say, than just sitting in Mokso because now it's, it's not like yoga where we you know, certain yogas where we sit in asanas. I know there's a lot of movement happening inside, but this is actually big physical movements. So kata is a form of meditation in movement, which is a higher level because you have to actually have your mind flow from intention to intention without any gaps in between. And of course we use our breath to avoid these little gaps coming in between. But from intention to intention, without getting stuck on any thoughts or judgments or opinions about what's going on in, in between. So you can liken, if you, if you picture a dog on a leash, you know, a dog without the leash is running wild everywhere and it's following every thought, it's acting on everything, it's a it piece on trees and it follows different tracks. But then you want to control it or tame it. So you put it on a leash and then it walks nicely next to you. So this you can kind of liken Mokso and Kata practice with. We kind of have a leash on ourselves. In Mokso it is the attention to the breath and in Kata is the breath and the visualization of the techniques. So that is kind of the leash that holds us down. In karate, the highest level of meditation is taking place during sparring. So we can liken this to the dog again, the story about the dog. But now, if you have a very, very well-trained dog, like a high-level black belt karate, you can take the leash off. You no longer need to focus, have this attention to the breath. That's just something that happens naturally. But your mind will not run wild even if you take the leash off, even if you stop this attention. You will, you, your mind will be free, but it will be reset. So in this next five minutes, I'm going to try to talk about how actually to use meditation um, practice uh, through kata. So the kata begins with a natural stance. When we're in natural stance, we want to gather our energy in our tanden, which is three fingers under the belly button, center of energy. Some katas even physically help us with this, for example, like kankodai, where we bring all the energy into our tanden. So, anyways, the first step, step is natural stance, where we gather our energy. The next step is when we're about, before we start to actually move, we want to have a very clear mental picture, an image, a vision of, 
for example, what the end picture looks, what is the next schema look like? So I have a strong mental image of this uh, picture. Um, and not only a picture, but we also want to keep a strong um, image of what is the purpose of the technique that we're doing, because that's going to help us to determine the trajectory, which line, which path we're traveling in, the line of energy, and also what type of energy we are going to use, what type of maybe ki or force, or that's very important. So we, a, a strong picture of where we're going, what it's looking like at the end, and also the purpose. Um, so physically, this is very, very important for us because it helps the brain. When we have a picture of where we're going, the brain will recruit the type of muscle fibers that are needed to take us to that place. And hopefully, if you have a good training, you will only recruit the muscle fibers necessary, not extra muscles that will slow us down and put brakes on our moves. The brain will also help to set yourself up and will, will help the neuromuscular system fire and sequence uh, with which exact sequence are these muscle fibers going to be recruited in. So by having this picture, you will already be set. It's like a bow and arrow that's pulled up. The brain has already told, given its message and it just, when you release your breath, you just go. So the third state would be when you actually begin to move. So when you're moving physically, you want to do less is more. You don't want to use extra muscle and try to muscle it because you will just slow it down. You want to be like water, like a river that just flows towards and towards your goal. And mentally, as you're doing this flowing, you just want to maintain a very strong image of everything I just described, of the kind of energy you want to deliver and where you're going. Uh, the next step would be when you get to the chemo. So when you get to the chemo point, physically you freeze completely. You look frozen on the outside, but of course the energy is flowing and being delivered to the target. Um, so it's like a water that runs and you freeze into a complete ice sculpture. So of course you, with your breath, you make pressure to floor to create an equal and opposite reaction but also you make pressure you know with your breath towards the center uh, for muscle contraction and mentally at this part you want to just visualize how you're sending your energy into the target in the direction uh, of the purpose of the technique and at the very end of your chemo when you feel like you've given it everything out that you have at that point, you want to start to, um, sorry, some noise outside. At the end of the technique, you want to give everything out. And when you feel that you've emptied yourself completely, all your energy, simultaneously, that moment needs to contain the picture of the visualized or the visualization of the next schema. So there's no space. The end of one schema contains the beginning of, of the, like the complete picture of the next schema. That way we avoid spaces in our kata. So at the very, very end, and uh, so after that you continue this cycle over and over again of a new picture, end of schema contains new picture, until you get to the very end of the kata. And I kind of look at it like a river that runs, that maybe being stopped, that places, but it never freezes completely. Sensei Avi always says this example that I think he got from Nishiyama about the canoe that floats on a river. You, the river keeps floating under you. The canoe could get stuck on something or you could hold it or stop it, but it keeps flowing. So where you stop the canoe, that would be the chemist, but the river flows and at the end, a river usually flows out to a body of water and then once it comes, like it can run into a lake or an ocean, once it comes down, everything becomes still again. So I feel like that's the end of the kata. You finish your last kime, let's say you have for example, and then you just 
run it back into the body of water and then your energy is back in your tendon and everything is quiet and still again. <laughs>